EQ is one of the most basic mastering processors. Making small tonal tweaks to the finished product can be a good way to subtly enhance clarity or add a little welcome heft or sparkle to a mix. Logic has several EQs, all of which are suitable for use in mastering applications. The main workhorse is the channel EQ, a multi-band, fully parametric eight-band EQ with four peak and dip bands, high and low shelving bands, and high and low filters. The same EQ layout is found in another Logic EQ, the Linear Phase EQ. I'll explain the difference between them later. Since mastering EQ is often minimal, at least compared with the EQ typically used in a mix, there's even a single band EQ available, which is basically any one band from the channel EQ. There's also a specialty EQ, the Match EQ, which automates the process of matching the overall tonal balance of one file to that of another. In terms of sound quality, these EQs are all intended to be clean and transparent, but Logic also includes three character EQs as well. The Vintage EQ collection provides models of three classic vintage analog EQs. These emulate both the individual behavior of each, the specific curves and responses that lend each its distinctive vibe, and the circuitry of the original hardware, which lends each its own particular analog character. I'll go through them individually in a few minutes, but I'll start with a look at the channel EQ. The channel EQ is Logic's basic full-featured parametric EQ. Each of the bands is fully parametric, with gain, center frequency, or corner frequency in the case of the shelving bands and the filters, and Q, bandwidth. Curves can be dialed up numerically or by dragging on the nodes in the display. There's also an included spectrum analyzer, which I'll look at later on in the course when I cover metering. Naturally, there's an overall gain slider to compensate for any noticeable changes in overall level caused by larger EQ boosts or cuts. In mastering, this would be less likely, since again, EQing is usually applied more subtly than in a mix, but it's a standard feature. In the drop down menu, Besides settings for the analyzer, there are several options that change the curves, which can subtly alter the effect of any tonal changes dialed up. These include proportional Q, which mimics the behavior of one of the vintage EQs. The linear phase EQ shares the exact same design with the channel EQ, but it's different under the hood. With digital EQ, the behavior of the EQ is typically designed to mimic the way real, physical EQs work in regards to phase. All physical hardware EQs, by virtue of the circuit components they contain, cause a little frequency-dependent phase shift when boosts and cuts are dialed up. This is very subtle, but perceptible. We're all used to it, it's just a natural part of what all EQs sound like. Technically, this kind of standard EQ is referred to as a minimum phase design. But for mastering, sometimes the most transparent quality is desired from processors, and if that's the case, a digital EQ can be designed to eliminate this phase shift. In that case, it's a linear phase design, hence Logic's linear phase EQ. Many people tend to believe that because they're often advertised as cleaner and more transparent than regular minimum phase EQs, linear phase EQs are inherently superior, but that's not necessarily the case. In fact, in most cases, any differences will be very subtle indeed, and in some situations, like with some transient signals, a linear phase EQ can potentially introduce some pre-ringing, which can theoretically soften transient energy. Before embarking on a mastering project, it might be worth doing a little listening test with some of the mixes to be mastered to see if, with that material, there's any significant noticeable difference. Dial up the same settings on instances of a channel EQ and a linear phase EQ and compare, especially the highs, to see if your ears suggest it might be worth it to utilize the linear phase design for the project. But be aware, Linear phase plugins tend to introduce significantly greater plugin latency. In fact, many mastering plugins do, including Logic's linear phase EQ, vintage EQs, multipressor, and adaptive limiter. As long as you have Logic's plugin latency compensation preference set to all for a mastering session, this shouldn't be a problem, but it is something you need to be aware of. 